What's up, ladies and gentlemen? The Podfather Nate here from the Journey into Comics podcast, the flagship show of the Journey into Comics network. I just want to make sure you guys know you can tune in every single Monday for a brand new episode of our show, where if it's comic book related, we've got you covered. The following is a Journey into Comics network production. I'm a dude who likes brews. It's time for Brews with Dudes. Ah, juicy. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whenever you're listening to this. Welcome back to another episode of Brews with Dudes. I'm your host, Nick Maxson. I'm sitting here once again with Casey Taylor from Jerry Lee's Pub. Or are we officially going with North End Pub now? Is that yes, it's official. It's official. Official as of Thursday. Name changed. Cool. So you always awesome. have to say the North End Pub, formerly Jerry Formerly. Lee's Pub. Yes. Formerly known as. Yeah, there it is. And we're also sitting here with Mr. Adam Lepper from Founders Brewing Company. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. About good. to be doing better. Hey, everyone uh, out there. I've been I've been dragging ass today because I drank too many beers last night, and then had to had to work all day. So I think this is exactly what I'm going to need to get myself back in the game. I feel you. I I was out late last night too. It was 4:20 last night. So it was it was it was uh, a holiday. <laughs> some people would say it was a long day. It was a very yeah, long day. I know for you it was a long day. Yeah, we we were up at at the crack of dawn heading down for a beer release. So. It was worth it, though. It was well worth it. Um, so let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into these beers. We're, we're right. down at the North End Pub uh, doing a Founders Tap Takeover. Uh, we're going to be uh, sampling a bunch of different beers specifically from Founders tonight. Going to do a little bit of trivia. Going to get all swagged out with some cool stuff. Uh, so I believe we're starting off with the All Day. All Day IPA. I could drink it all day. I have drank it all day before. Me too. It's, one of the, it's a good beach beer. Mm-hmm. Good lawnmower beer. Um, 4.7%. So, hence, you can drink it all day. Uh, yeah, so um, this beer is now our most successful or best-selling beer. Um, about 50% of the beer we make now is all day. We wow. Make, that one beer has become so popular. It's because it's the number one selling session IPA and the number two selling IPA of any kind. In wow. both the United States and in good old Indiana. Wow. Uh, yeah. So the word crushable. <laughs> that, applies. Yeah, right. It's, it's yeah. crushable. Yeah. Definitely crushable. But yeah, that's what I like about this is the four point seven. It's a beer that you can actually drink a lot of and it not and not have to completely pay for it. It's not the eight to ten percent or that it's is not, gonna catch up later. Yep. It's not terribly bitter either. It's no. just but 42 IBUs, so it's got a little bit of a hop kick from Amarillo, Simco, Simcoe. Um, Jeremy Kosmicki, our brewmaster, um, he wanted to make a beer that he could literally drink all day um, while he was brewing. Um, and he want, he, the one thing that he's quite most proud of, I've heard him talk about, is the mouthfeel also. It's, it doesn't feel like a thin, watered-down IPA. Right. It's, it's got – and he, there's some tricks that he used, some brewing techniques, but um, – the, one of the most interesting things that I learned from him was he spent four years and over 400 different recipes pursuing this beer. Holy shit. It took him four years to get to the one that we're drinking now, and it came out in 2012. So he started brewing, going after this beer in about wow. 2008. So although it's not considered the original or the very first session IPA to hit the market, mm -hmm. we're pretty confident he was working on one before anyone else. Yeah, so that is awesome. And what would make it a session? Um, they're typically, um, the word session is used when a beer is under 5% alcohol, so that meaning that you can drink more of them in a session. So All these things make sense. <laughs> all, so far, all the answers and the terminology. You walked me right yeah. through that one. <laughs> I'm just clarifying for anyone that doesn't know. Hell yeah. Right, but, of course. Yeah, yep. The answer makes sense. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> so we've got... Uh, what do we have tonight? Is it five different ones? Or? Yes, yes. Cool. It's the Centennial, the All Day, the Breakfast Out, the Rubeus, and the Dirty Bastard. The Dirty Bastard. That Dirty Bastard. And then we've also got, they, they've got, brought a cool list of, like, cocktails and blends that you can do. 
Like, there's this one that I, I keep eyeballing. They call it the chocolate-covered raspberry. And, and you blend the rubeus with a porter or a stout. It just sounds fucking awesome. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't we go to the breakfast stout, leave a little bit, pour the uh-huh. rubeus, talk about that, and then okay. move on to it. Yeah. I like, I like the way you think. Yeah, so we'll do yeah, some I'm not, I'm breakfast not, stuff. Are you allowed to cuss on this? Yes. Okay, yes. all right. Because <laughs> We sure can. One of the things, actually, the dude at the bar told me, I had never had a breakfast until recently, and he said, if I could die, I would want to go out <laughs> riding a motorcycle, getting head, drinking this beer. <laughs> so that was like my preemptive nice. introduction to the beer, which would also explain why one would die, though. I mean, the whole, <laughs> yeah. that, that's an unbelievable way to die. Oh, yeah. So, but at least I'm, he said he'd you be happy. Ha- you'd have to have one of those little side cards. I that's know. what I thought. That's exactly what I said, dude. So you were on with one of those side cards. Right. <laughs> nothing else makes sense. But it was a weird picture. <laughs> but I will say this. It's a fantastic beer. Fantastic yeah, yeah. beer. They've got a uh, – Adam brought this nice little booklet uh, that talks about all their different beers and stuff. And everything is pretty across the board rated amazingly. Like, everyone – Loves them all. Yeah, there's uh, there's uh, we use rate beer. There's rate beers, beer advocate. I know some people have their beefs with rate beer, but we've been on it for a long time, and, uh, and like the beers, it. yeah, the beers, and the beers are rated um, have have a lot of ratings. If you look up the number of ratings, that really tells yeah. you that it's a large sample size. But yeah, you bring up something that I use when I'm selling our beer um, all the time. We actually have um, what I am confident is the highest rated portfolio of beer available in Indiana. If it's, you look I mean, across our board, if 97, you're across 100, us, 99, 98. Our two lowest rated beer, we have one that's a 73 that's Green Zebra and one that's an 82. Um, and then the next lowest is a, 90, a 92. Like everything is 92 or above on rate beer, pretty much except two of our beers. So I actually had somebody today ask me if we were going to have the green zebra i was the, like i think we were i think we're right it's not quite out yet right outside of it yeah, yeah. Uh, green zebra comes out next i think uh our distributor begins selling it next week um cool. so the week of april 23rd um it'll be hitting hitting out there that's our watermelon goza um but yeah so i guess breakfast out is the next beer we're trying here and we got in front of us now yeah um so yeah, this is um, what we, uh, the original breakfast stout. Um, there's many now like it, um, but we, uh, Jeremy, was the first to start messing around and experimenting with um, chocolate and coffee and some oatmeal to boost the mouthfeel. Mm-hmm. No, so, it's my favorite. It's delicious. It's creamy. Yeah, roasty, creamy, a little sweet from the chocolate. Um, mm-hmm. So I mean, it's more of a. It's, it's not a. There's many different. Um, Many different categories of stout, dry stouts, um, milk stouts. This would probably fall closest to a sweet stout because of the um, the additions of the addition of the chocolate. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you're eight point three percent, so it's got a nice kick to it. This up until this year was only available in the cold weather months. We basically only sold it from about October through January or February. But as of this year. Um, we have gone year round with it, so you'll be able to find it in stores and and on taps any time of the year. Awesome. And another fun fact: it's the number five selling stout in the country. Wow! The, the top four selling stouts are all year round. You can imagine what the number one by far is. It comes from Ireland, um, ah. and but then the but then the other three uh, along with that one are all year round stouts. So mm-hmm. we, um, I wouldn't be surprised if we creep up into the. Top three or so. Now that we're making ours year round, yeah. we got in the top five of the beer we were selling for a couple a, months for like a third of the year. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah, I, I uh, have just in the past couple months started getting more into stouts and stuff, and this is definitely one of the first ones that I tried, and uh, love it. Totally love it. I like it. It's not that heavy. Yeah. You know, some of the stouts you drink it and they're just very heavy. They kind of sit heavy. You can only have yeah. a couple. And this is another one that's super drinkable that you can have numerous, and I just love the taste of it. Yeah. So, Nick, what are you doing over there? It looks like you're a mad scientist. Yeah, I went ahead and uh, I threw some of the rubeus into the end, the end of my breakfast stout. Yeah, so, yeah, we call this, uh, or I call it, we kind of 
unofficially refer to it as a breakfast rub because we're using mm-hmm. rubeus. Yeah. So um, that's one way to look at it. But it kind of the the, the raspberry kicks in with the chocolate um, and really holy and, yeah, that's shit. That's a good combo. Yeah, that, you can. That I is recommend a really people good pull combo. It. You play with the with the ratios. Some people like more raspberry, more rubeus, and it really thins it out. I tend to think it's better with seventy or so percent breakfast out, and then just a yeah. little bit of rubeus. It really kicks through, really well. But yeah, see, that's the, what I the did. The chocolate I had... hits you in the front, and then and then the raspberry. The raspberry, like it's actually a chocolate covered raspberry. That is amazing. I feel like that's what I'm going to be drinking on tonight. No, yeah. I'm just going to keep, keep <laughs> blending these together. Hell no. yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a, definitely a fun thing is looking at that list and going through some of these and trying them and mixing them because it's you don't think about it, but it's a perfect mixture. It's oh, absolutely yeah. awesome. Yeah, we, um, we 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 love Rubeus by itself, and it's a great beer by itself, but it's also a fun beer to, to play with. Uh, we like I like to joke around that... Um, Black and Tan doesn't get to have a monopoly on blending beer. Right. I mean, there's a there's a lot of other blends out there now. You, you'll see bars doing, um, but with Rubeus, you can do what we're doing. Um, it, we can transition to also the fact that my favorite um, blend is what, what I call the All Day Rub. Uh, it's 50-50 all day, uh, all day in Rubeus, and you would think that sounds a little weird, but it kind of t- comes out tasting like grapefruit juice. That um, sounds great. It's got a little, if you like, if you're a hophead, if you like hoppy beers, it, it knocks down the sweetness of Rubeus even more, um, throws in a little bit of bright hop, hoppiness to it. Um, the other big one that we, that we do, we also do these at our tap room if you come visit us in Grand Rapids. Um, the other one that's very popular for those that aren't hopheads is the Dirty Rub. You, you take Dirty Bastard and blend it 50-50 or so with Rubeus, and it makes a malty, sweeter raspberry or raspberry mm. flavor. But you can get all kinds of co- uh, crazy. You can make your own raspberry shandy. You can make raspberry mimosas, raspberry mules, ma- raspberry mojitos. Just take a shot of your favorite spirits, throw it over ice, and mix it with some Rubeus. Yeah. Have a raspberry cooler. Yeah. It, yeah. it goes well with almost pretty much every li- liquor you can think of. Yeah. I've had people tell me they've done it. I haven't done it myself with everyone yet, but. Yeah, so I was going to say, if we want, we can do the Scottish and then throw the Rubeus back in there and get some of that as well. Mm-hmm. We might as well. We might as well. We've got a good system going on here. Yeah. I'll take my uh, my Dirty Bastard too. Where? There uh, it is. I think this is mine, and. The uh, yeah, so um, I wish I would have mentioned this earlier when we had the all day, but that's what I'll be drinking later tonight. That's one of my favorite. I I sit around at home and just crack open one of each and pour it into a nice big glass, and yep. and uh, it's very refreshing. I have a feeling that's I'm gonna just do all every single one of them with a little <laughs> bit of the rubeus because I I like having a little bit of fruitiness in my beers. <laughs> Especially oh, when I'm you glad mix you clarify it in your beers. In my beers. <laughs> in my beers. Not particularly fruity. <laughs> I don't think it was. So, so, Dirty bastard. This, what is it? Like Scotch phenomenal. style? Scotch style ale. Malty, caramely, sweet. Maybe just a touch of peat smoke. Um, mm. for, uh, we use seven different imported malts, and... Um, those uh, two of those malts are actually peat smoked as opposed to um, electric or wood kilned. Um, hmm. So it gives it a little bit of an earthiness. But yeah, Dirty Bastard is a really fun beer to talk about for me and for, uh, for the brewery. Um, it's got a very special place in our heart. We call it the beer that saved the brewery. Um, hmm. If it weren't for Dirty Bastard, there wouldn't be a Founders today. Um, a tra- we'll trace our history all the way back to 1997 when our owners started it. Um, Dave Engbers and Mike Stevens, they're two college buddies that homebrewed together. Um, they started a brewery, but by the year 2000, barely three years in, uh, they were they were not doing so well. The brewery was was not go- the beers weren't selling. Um, they were less than six months off from having to sell off their brewing equipment and go out of business forever. And they decided to brew a last hurrah batch. And like the home brewers they were, they brewed a beer they didn't care whether it sold. They brewed a beer they wanted to drink. Right. It was some they, they they figured last hurrah, man. Why are we gonna brew? And so they brewed Dirty Bastard. At the time, it was one of the first. You can't see me doing air quotes, but first. <laughs> Uh, it, uh, beers in the extreme beer movement. I mean, we're talking the year 2000. Um, there wasn't a lot of cra- um, craft beer hadn't really exploded quite yet. Um, and 
They put it on in the tap room. It was so successful. People drank it so quickly and loved it so much that it kept the doors open. Wow. Um, they, they realized then that they had been making unremarkable beers that they just thought people would like and they thought would sell. And it was the styles that you had to make. You, you could have a checklist of craft beer styles right. back then that you had to do. And um, Scotch Ale was not on any of those lists. But they made this, this beer, and it... Um, it inspired them to redefine the motto of the company to brood for us. Brood for us uh, defines what we do. We brew beer we love. Hopefully you do too, and then you're one of us. If not, there's a whole lot of great other beer out yeah, there. Go right. drink that. No hard feelings. We right. tried with our flavors. If they don't resonate with you, I'm sure you'll find a different one right. some, from somebody else. So, and You guys have a little bit of everything. At, at, I, you know, There's a lot of... A lot of breweries i see that that are like they'll just do all ipas it seems like they just do a bunch of those but yep or they specialize looking, in a in yeah. as, they, maybe they do mostly belgians or, yeah oh absolutely yeah. Yep. absolutely yep. No, i do like the portfolio you guys do a great job of spreading out your different beers for all different types of people because uh, not everybody is into your hardcore ipas not everybody's into stouts yep. uh my wife is loved rubeus likes the yep. mimosa idea so yep. i think it's nice that you bring people out that they can try different beers that works for them uh you guys i know have brought it up a little bit uh, i know you've gone nick but can you talk a little bit about the brewery i have not been yeah. able to but i looked on the website it's and it just looks super massive. impressive and awesome yeah sure um so yeah we're located basically downtown grand rapids uh michigan uh you can see our the brewery now for 131 as you come in if you're coming from the south and you're coming as most of us would be um, coming into to Grand Rapids, you can see it from the from the highway. Uh, yeah, we've now filled out the entire city block. Um, we've basically slowly taken over that block and bought it up and and built um, expanded our brewery. Um, yeah, we now have a 350 um, barrel brew house. Wow. Um, we started. This is another crazy thing about the, the the guys that started this brewery. They started the brewery with a 30 barrel brew, uh, brew kettle. Wow. Or brew system. Most breweries now, if they starting, it's maybe seven, ten at the max. That's yeah. your starter size at the most. They started with thirty. They went all in. That was one of the reasons Damn. they were <laughs> behind the financial curve right. or, uh, curve for a while because they had dropped so much in, but. They eventually graduated to two 30-barrel systems. Then it was uh, they added an 80, then a second 80-barrel. That Now we have, have what's considered to be one of the largest um, brewing systems of its kind um, because we still do what's very familiar to any of the home brewers out there. We combine, we do our mashing and our, um, we do our mashing and, um, Oh, now I blanked on it. Um, we do the mash in the same kettle as the as the boil. Okay. So um, s some of the brewing systems they separate that out. Um, but this is a older traditional system. It's much closer to the way home brewers brew. Yeah. Um, so um, it's a huge system. But we are open seven days a week. We have a huge tap room that seats six hundred people. Um, if you like, they were saying it's massive. If you go into the tap room, just the tap room area. So there's. A huge uh, main bar, a side bar, which com came from the original building, um, which I could tell a story about the name of the brewery also, if you want to hear that. I'm, unfortunately for some, fil filled with uh, all kinds of stories, but we also <laughs> have an outdoor patio, a company store. Um, we do tours. You have to go online ahead of time, find the tour page, sign up for a tour in advance. You'll see it costs $10, but you get a free pint glass and a free fill at the end of the tour. Um, because we do that because we keep the tours to only 12 people, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that if somebody's saying they're going to show up, they show up so that our tour right. guides have a full tour. And, and uh, so, so you can take tours um, at, at Founders, but it's a fun place to come, great city to come and enjoy. Um, there's about 40 breweries in and around Grand Rapids in a wow. city about the size of Fort Wayne. Um, I'm just use that because I'm from Fort Wayne. But, yeah, there's a lot. We could spend a, a, whole, a whole day, a whole weekend. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of great other breweries up there. Um, I couldn't, I, I shouldn't name one because I won't be able to name them all. But there, we have a, we're, we're fortunate to have a really rich brewing scene, and that is, where, that'll bring me to the story about the the name of the brewery, um, Founders Brewing Company. How did Founders come to be named Founders? Well, the interesting fact of the matter is, it's technically. Canal Street Brewing Company. When I get my checks, they come from Canal Street Brewing Company because when the owners were going to start the brewery originally, uh, Canal Street was an area that was going to get revitalized and restored by the city of Grand Rapids. So they went to 
they were planning on locating themselves on Canal Street. Um, well, interestingly enough, that deal and situation completely fell through, and our first br uh, operations was on Monroe Street. So we've never even been <laughs> existed on a Canal Street. Right. <laughs> um, but when they made their package, when they first started making their packaging and their labels and their, like, tap um, stick labels and stuff, they put a line on there that said, Brewing Founders Beers. And they only meant that as a reference to the founding brewers of the Grand Rapids original brewing scene back in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened, they found, was that br customers were going into stores and going into other bars and saying, I want one of those founders beers. They'd overlook the Canal Street Brewing late name because it was old graphic design, the, the way it looked. Wow. So they just decided, you know what, since we've never, we're have we not on Canal Street and we never have been, we might as well just change it. And so technically, Founders is a DBA, uh, doing business as. So it's Canal Street Brewing C Company doing business as Founders. Uh, wow. Yeah. Bam. It's crazy. That's cool. Well, history now, that is cool. That is pretty cool. Whenever I've, we went, so we went up uh, for uh, the CBS release, the, the latest one. And that was our first time there, and fucking, they opened at 11, we were there at 11.15, and there were hundreds of people. <laughs> the place was totally packed. It was, it was cold, it was snowing, but we were still on the patio, perfectly warm, because there's, there's heaters everywhere, it's a massive patio, and I, I keep telling people, I'm like, it's the biggest brewery that I've ever been to, I'm like, and it, take, it takes up like a whole city block. Yep. So hearing that that is actually the case, I'm like, it looks like it's taking up the whole damn block. Yeah, we have we now have the capacity um, to brew um, just over a million barrels a year if we needed to. Damn. Um, last year we brewed about four hundred and seventy thousand barrels. This year we'll probably brew about six hundred thousand barrels. Um, Damn. So we are now Michigan's largest brewery. Um, we passed our friends down in Kalamazoo last year just by a, by a hair. Um, it wasn't like a competition. We didn't know it until after the fact. Yeah. And um, we're just brewing the beer to get it to people that want it and it yeah. turns out uh yeah so we're we're pretty um fortunate and and um and humbled by the success and the appreciation that people have for our beers no i know we're making a trip up this summer I'm oh, definitely yeah. looking forward to that it'll be my first time going up there but you were the first one that was like dude Piney this place is <laughs> yeah this place is super impressive so all the brewery junkies out there it's definitely going to be worth the trip so i'm excited about we, it yeah. we've been working on another trip here we've who, who's on the list right now? We want to hit Bear Hands because that's right there. Oh, Bear Hands is awesome. Man. We want to do Bear Hands. We want to do Dark Horse and Bells. We haven't, yep. been, we haven't been any of those yet. So. Yep. You could do it kind of, um, yeah, Bear, Bear Hands is just outside South Bend. Um, I know those guys really well. They, they make some great beers. They have a, a nice little spot there, and I think Granger it's called. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and um, if you're heading up or back, it, Definitely Dark Horse and Bells are right on the way. You can hit those easily. If you're over to the further uh, west side, there's like Greenbush and, and New Holland. You can hit up on the on the oh, way up New there, Holland too. Oh, New Holland is up that way. New Holland's real close. Uh, right, you slide right past there um, <laughs> on your way up to Grand Rapids. It's a little bit out closer to the lake, but, yeah, there's a lot of great breweries in Michigan. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Sweet. What do we have left? Is Dirty Rub. Oh yeah, oh, dirty rub. Dirty rub. I, I already downed my dirty rub. Yeah, I know. I'm rubbed out. <laughs> that was absolutely. That's another one. It's really the rubeus is an interesting flavor to throw in with those because it takes away kind of the harshness. You know, with the scotch ale, yeah. it's like you get that kick, which I love, and the rubeus just gives you that different it's kind of aftertaste. Out. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I've had some fun do, doing that. We go, I go to beer uh, beer festivals. You know, I'll have rubeus and probably dirty bastard or and all day and. It's always fun when as people step up to your table at a beer festival, and before they can say anything, you say, "Can I give you a dirty rub?" <laughs> and it, that that tends to break the ice, right? Pretty good, <laughs> In, unless it's a, unless it's a, maybe a lady and her boyfriend's standing right behind her, and he didn't yeah, like, doesn't realize. I, 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 had a, I had a nephew almost got, get punched over that one Oof. time, but it, it was quickly resolved when we explained it. Right, it's a like, beer, man. No, look, 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 look. It's okay here. Look. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, if you did brand as a beer in my mind, it's like the guy with the mustache giving creepy back rubs in the bar. <laughs> There's always that dude wandering around asking people if they the want packet, it back. Yeah, the yeah. packaging you want opportunities dirty, are endless. Yeah. Yeah. I, know our, I know our HR department doesn't love us doing this either. Cause, <laughs> but yeah, you can do it with a mustache and a gold chain. Yeah, it just says good. dirty rub. <laughs> you can do it with uh, our new solid gold, which is a beer we don't have today, but um, every, that's our latest beer. Um, it's a premium lager, easy drinking. And then you call it, it's called solid gold, so we can call it a solid rub. Um, the, the HR department really doesn't like it when I, when I reference our seasonal um, IPA called Azaka IPA. It starts with A-Z, and so I like to call that an as rub. So like, I, come on, man. Yeah, You're making so this hard on us. We got PC pills, so then we do the PC rub, and that's then everything's okay. You know, yeah. It's just kind of like this barely the, touching your shoulder yeah. with your fingertips. There you go. <laughs> this is a perfectly fine rub. There's, yeah. there's, totally kosher. <laughs> oh, shit, that is funny. Oh, yeah, Casey mentioned um, coming up over the summer, um, you, it – we like I mentioned before, we're open seven days a week. Um, we are family friendly. Um, most breweries in Michigan are, um, so you can bring the kids if you, if you want. Um, we have food. Uh, we call it the psychedelic Atessin. So we have banging sandwiches, some of the best cheese, uh, beer cheese dip. But um, one day, one day coming up, just because it's top of mind for me, we just announced on Friday the the music lineup for Founders Fest. There That's, we go. The, the downside of Founders Fest Day is that you cannot get into the tap room or the brewery. There's no tours because Founders Fest is a music fest put on in the streets surrounding the brewery. Cool. Um, so we do, we, this will be our 11th year. Um, this, um, we Basically, tickets in advance are 40 in advance, 50 day of, but it's a th- from 3 to 11 p.m., so an eight-hour music fest. For for forty bucks, you're paying like five bucks an hour. Um, yeah, that's and not bad at all. They've got decent acts. It's all founders. It's all founders beers. Um, we got some really cool music this year. Joe Russo's "Almost Dead" is awesome. coming. They just announced uh, "Anti Antibellus." Um, the FBC All Stars, the Founders Brewing All Stars. It's a the company band. Basically, employees have the have a band. Wow. They've had it for like eight nine years. That's cool. They do all covers because they don't have time to to, well, right, to right. write and, pr- <laughs> and produce original songs. But they rock. I mean, I was cool. blown away the first time I got to see. We have some seriously talented musicians that even play that, um, and it's like a, it get, ranges up to a ten to twelve piece band. Sometimes there's horns thrown in, there's keyboards sometimes that thrown in, cool. backup singers, but they can they also have some guitarists that can shred and um, do everything from like Prince to Led Zeppelin to Leonard Skinner. All right, what is with the date? When is it, this going down? So that's uh, Saturday, June sixteenth is Founders Fest. It's always the Saturday of Father's Day, which can make it tricky for a lot of people. You just how to tell the wife, hey, this is what I want for Father's right. Day. Yeah, if, if there you go. This, this is, is my this Father's is Day gift. present. I'm gonna I make can it be happen. home by Sunday afternoon. I won't be there this in the morning. I'm going <laughs> to stay overnight so I'm safe and I'll drive home, but I can be home by Sunday afternoon. Right, exactly. So, yeah, come up and check us out sometime. Um, just know that if you come up for that, that you will want to buy tickets in advance. You are looking at a eight to 10,000 person party. Um, Great. With Founders Beers, there's beers brewed specifically for the fest. We brew a beer called Founders Fest Wheat. That's one of the only Ooh. times of the year we, br- we brew a wheat beer. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm rambling on again. That's perfectly fine. Did I? I don't know where I saw this. It might have been when I was down there. Did you guys have Umphreys play down there once? Yeah, last year's Founders Fest, Umphreys headlined. Dude. So it was Umphreys, Blues Traveler, and Leftover Salmon last year. Damn. Um, um, yeah, Founders tends to lean a little more toward the jam band and, and I'm all uh, about that. So. That kind of stuff. I mean, we all, our our head brewmaster also Jeremy also though has a um, a Guns N' Roses tribute band. Um, wow. He he plays uh, bass and play or he plays guitar and plays the part of Slash. They sometimes dress up even. Awesome. And his wife is the singer. She's the lead singer and she lays it as wow. Axel. It's crazy. She can that do. Is cool. She not only has the the sound down, but she has all the his moves. Yeah. She well, yeah. she is. Yeah, she's got the hair. They, it's fun. He, they've actually they play Founders um, and some of our parties um, from time to time. I know. I think the last time they played at Founders was for the 20th anniversary party last October. But they'll play occasionally. I think their other band is called Oracle. But sometimes they kind of change the vibe from just 
their own original music to tonight's a GNR tribute. Yeah. And like the at the uh, the twentieth anniversary party last year, they played Appetite for Dis- Destruction from beginning to that end. That is cool. Um, so. It was a it was a it was a sweet set. Well, I yeah. feel like I have to let you know, like every person ever from Lafayette, lets everyone know that's from not from here that Axl Rose yeah. and Izzy are from Lafayette. Yeah, that's right. I, I feel like that is like the go to like for every human being that walks yeah. through here. You either you, say, you either start with it's Purdue country or it's where Axl Rose is from <laughs> or <laughs> Shannon Hoon. I Shane mean, it's, Hoon. it's A, B, or yeah, C, and that's. Yeah. That's the only way you can let anyone know that the city exists or yep. those three things. Yep. Damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it looks awesome. like we're, we're on to the centennial, the last of uh, the we five are. beers we're trying. This is our year-round single hopped IPA um, named after the hop that we put in it. We have a tendency to do that, like a Zaka, um, but that's a seasonal IPA. Centennial is uh, 7.2%, 65 IBUs. Um, it's... Um, it, it, in its current iteration, we're quite proud of it. Um, there is a story of how we used to have an IPA, and um, Jeremy uh, tried to hook up a friend with a keg of our old IPA. This is before the Brewed for Us days. Um, and his friend turned him down on a free keg and went to a liquor store and bought a keg of Aww. one of our competitors' IPAs instead because our IPA was not to be proud of at that time yeah. it's what made jeremy go back to the to drawing board and come up with uh, centennial which cool. is like i like to put a, um or i've seen on one of our t-shirts before this is the perfect ipa to sip and watch other trends come and go it's a it's not to knock those other trends but this is an ipa that has stood the test of time it's you can see it's got a 99 rating on rate beer mm-hmm. that's pretty tough for a year-round ipa to get a, 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 a rating that high um it's not a seasonal or special release you can get it any time and it's just a really piney good time yeah that is i think that's the word i was looking for to describe it piney piney and floral kind of um, yeah yeah aromatic but there's a, there's a malt backbone there to balance it so um we don't really go out of crazy whack one way or the other like you, whether it's um dirty bastard or centennial um we go we shoot for for a nice solid balance i think the good thing too about all these beers is the aftertaste like when you're it done drinking well. yeah, yeah when they you're done. all sit well and you can kind of when you think about it think about the flavors and you can taste them there's never any of these beers do not have bad aftertaste you know there are some beers that i'll like the initial taste and then it kind of is that aftertaste or you almost question the drinkability over time and all of these beers that we tasted today all have an awesome finish oh yeah right on yeah thank you fellas this was fun we're, we're this about is a great half, time about a half an hour in it's probably about time for other people to start showing up and and drinking this beer with us i'm gonna go get myself a big old cup of rubeus and then start just uh start pouring it in different stuff pouring it into yeah. different stuff yeah <laughs> like how does this taste with this how does it taste with this Hell yeah. Sweet. And I might run to the car and get uh, get a, a couple, a few cans of solid gold for us to try after oh, there we go. To, to see um, and, and see if any of the customers want to try that, too, because that's a great bowling beer, too. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, like a league lager. But, yeah, also I wanted to mention thank you very much. You guys were gentle and kind with me. This is my very first podcast, I'm pretty oh, sure. Cool. So I, I feel um, honored, but also... Uh, yeah, you were gentle. No, I think nice. you killed Thanks it. You gave us some time. good backdrop, some good yeah. information. That was the awesome story about the dirty bastard. And there, there's so a story June, about everything. There's a story <laughs> so for June sixteenth, right? June sixteenth is right. Founders Fest. Something go, tells me it's on sale. Yeah, there. I, yeah, I feel like we're gonna be present. But that's yeah. we're gonna be out there. That's get a good into trip. it. Uh, get look into hotels right away too. That uh, since they announced the lineup, <laughs> hotels are filling up. You may have to Uber from your hotel and not be able to get a walking distance oh, one, man. but. Um, yeah, I've been, this will be my third year at Founders Fest, and it's a great time. Cool. I'm excited. Well, thanks again, Adam. Thank you. Thanks, Casey, yeah, for, Casey. Uh, Thank for hosting this, this takeover tonight. This is going to be a yeah. lot of fun. Oh, yeah. No, I'm excited. I'm excited to jump into uh, what, what we call it after hours with Brews with Dudes, getting that, that solid gold, and I think there might even be some KBS hiding around here somewhere. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. I might have I seen a case of Backwoods Bastard in my, in my car, well, too. Oh, so. goodness. Well, yeah. we're going to say goodbye to y'all, yeah. man. <laughs> we we're going to go drink. drink. Yeah, we got some beer to drink. So, Cheers, uh, y'all. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next time on Brews with Dudes.